Hello friends, my name is Marines and I'm going to try and pretend like I haven't started 87 million reading vlogs this year and never finished or finished and hated everything about what I recorded. So I'm trying again. I really like the idea of doing weekly vlogs or weekend reading vlogs but I haven't quite figured out what I want to do and I'm not very good about remembering to like record updates and what I'm doing and whatnot. So I'm just gonna keep trying until I get into the habit of it and hopefully eventually I have something that I can publish. So today is Sunday, October 7th, October 7th and I'm about to go to church. I'm actually running a little bit late um, but today it's church and then to my mom's house for family. We have dinner kind of early right after church so family dinner. Then I'm meeting with my best friend Jen and we're gonna go watch The Hate You Give, which I'm super, super excited about. I feel like I'm just gonna cry all over the place, probably. I loved the book when I read it last year, so I'm super excited about the adaptation. And then after that, home, and I have to record an episode of the podcast. We're gonna be talking about The Dragon Prince on Netflix. And you're probably asking, Maddie, is there any reading in there? I don't know. The last book that I finished was I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara, which is a nonfiction book about um, this writer's like obsession with the Golden State Killer and looking into who it was because it's a cold case from, the, from 76 to 86 he was active. And she actually passed away before she was able to finish the book, but between her editor, her husband, and some investigators that she worked with, they put it together and they added some notes and they published it this year. After it was published, they caught the Golden State Killer. It's a super interesting interesting book and I thought I've been in a really weird reading mood so I figured since nonfiction like really went down well I would start another nonfiction book and I'm gonna I'm currently reading Bad Blood. I'm, I just started like one or two chapters so that's what I'll be reading tonight and throughout the day if I have any chance we'll see. I just got out from watching Thug and if I look like a wreck yes I ended up going to church and then my family was going to go out to eat and I didn't really have enough time to do that and then make the movie on time but I did have some extra time in between so I just met up with my friend, I met up with Jen a little bit early and we ate here in the mall and then we watched the movie and I was making little sobbing noises as I was watching it and I'm glad I watched it with Jen because she knows how I am like I cry for everything but this was particularly emotional and I'm, I feel like I will have a lot of feelings <laughs> once it settles but it was it was great um it was a good adaptation of the book and there were a few things that were changed obviously and some things that they added in towards the end but overall I think the movie just captured a lot of what the book was and gave me a lot of the same feelings as the book so that was great and um yeah I'll try and like parse out the rest of my feelings and um I don't know I just cried it was very 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 emotional so was the book I cried when I was reading the book too so it was great um I did have to like I'm sitting in my car right now and as soon as the movie got out I realized that I was not gonna have enough time to drive all the way back home the movie's in pre-release this weekend so that means I had to come to a further theater closer to Miami to catch it early um but it means that I don't think I'm gonna have enough time to race all the way home to make the seven o'clock podcast episode so I had to reschedule which I feel really bad about because it was just like poor planning on my poor amount on my part I didn't realize how long the movie was gonna take which is really really stupid reason to not make the podcast but it happened so we have rescheduled and so that means that I get to go home now and have a few hours back to myself and you'd think that might mean reading but it might mean <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so I went to go take care of my friend's cats because I'm cat sitting. And then by the time I got home, I realized that what started off as kind of like, oh, well, I have a headache after the movie is like, oh, I really have a headache. So I took some Advil and I'm in bed and I'm going to listen to Bad Blood until I actually get sleepy because it's kind of early and I'm not actually sleepy, but... I tried to like open my laptop and that hurt my head. I tried to watch some TV and that hurt my head. So I'm just gonna sit here in the dark and listen to an audiobook. It sucks because I would have liked to use this time for something productive, but 
You gotta listen to your body. Hello, it is Monday at 6.48 p.m. and I just got home from work. I ended up working a little longer than quitting time because it was a wild day at work today. It was just very intense and like on my feet, go, go, go all day. And it was a little frustrating at the end. Um, reasons that I won't bore you with just work reasons like nothing bad or anything but it was just like on the reading front between last night and today I've read a hundred pages of bad blood and people that I really like Rincey and Deboki both talked very highly about this book and I'm enjoying it nothing bad so far but a hun about a hundred pages in I'm kind of ready for it to move on I had been following the whole Theranos thing not really following like I, I had heard of what was going on basically towards the end when it self imploded and whatnot so I, I was recognize I recognized the name and it was familiar with kind of the gist of the story um, but I don't know details so I'm kind of curious where this like saga is going because we're at the beginning and basically all that's happened is that you know she was this I forgot her name now Elizabeth I think that was running the company was like overselling and they didn't have an actual product that worked and just kind of looking at, at that and when different people who were working with the company realized and how they pieced it all together and that's been interesting but it's been going on now for the hundred pages and so I'm just kind of worried not worried but I'm wondering what the next 200 pages is gonna be because I feel like in my own head that was the full story so I guess we shall see but that's what I will be reading tonight um, probably before bed right now I'm, I'm going to recap Winona Earp uh, the third episode I'm doing that on Snark Squad and I was supposed to get a recap up today but I didn't and I don't know that I'll be able to recap a full episode and get it published tonight but I want to at least try and start the recap Diesel I'm about to get into bed and I actually finished the entire Winona Earp recap and posted it which I don't really like to do as I mentioned I didn't know if I was going to do it but I also don't like to do it because I feel like, like I catch a lot less typos when I write and proofread all in one night but I did it because I wanted something up today <laughs> who knows if something will be up tomorrow not I but that's the way I roll I will maybe read or also this week's podcast episode is edited and I usually give it a listen before we publish on Wednesday so that way if I hear anything or catch any like glaring mistakes I can tell Nicole so she sent that link over to me today so I can prove it and I might do that I don't know either that or read we'll see book and Jamie I love... is a major plot vessel like right shit yes. right shit actually yes. happens yeah, yeah. right and like with people we know are important like even if we don't know which fray this is like whatever that's at least easier <laughs> than <laughs> did not bother trying to keep track of which fray I mean joking. which like because at least that's intentional it's like there's so many it doesn't matter <laughs> right <laughs> whereas like there's only like four great joy uncles we're supposed to care about all of them I can't I, I, I just yeah, can't no. one of them likes books a lot so yeah he's the only good yes, one that was my the reason that's yeah. all I needed to know. Yeah. yeah, we're like, okay, good. We like him and not the other weird, scary, rapey ones. Like, that's easy. But yeah, I think this, um, uh, different plots of this, like I said, get better and better for me every time. So I, I do love a lot of this, but I do, like, fully appreciate that, like, yeah, first read, I didn't know what the hell was going on. Hi, Mama. I'm good. How are you? Okay, I'm uh How are the other ones? Dad, I just called Daddy. I know. Okay. I got home from work already. All right. I I'm love praying you. for you. Okay, thank you. You pray for yourself too, okay? <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> okay, I love you. I love you too. Okay, bye bye. Bye. It is Tuesday, October 9th at 10.23 p.m. and I worked again today because it's a weekday. And then when I got home, 
I was working on Snark Squad stuff, so I published today's Charmed post that's up on the blog, and then I decided I would work on the next Westworld, which in between like Twitter breaks and it just is a very involved show, so it takes a little longer to recap. It took me like three hours. So now it's just time to hop into bed. Between yesterday night and today, I did read another 75 pages of Bad Blood, so I'm just over the halfway mark with that one. I would love to finish tonight, but I'm also incredibly tired, so I don't know if that's going to be possible, but it may be. I, I would love to finish that book tonight. It's super interesting, just again, like trying to get to like what the the like conclusion will be. I mean, the whole point of the book is like bad science <laughs> so it's been interesting but yeah I got um an absolutely remarkable thing in my book of the month today which I wish I had it somewhere nearby to hold it up but I started that book actually on audio and seeing it today in the mail kind of made me think that that might be what I pick up next but also Emma Approved which is the net or the YouTube like um short from Pemberley Digital who did the Lizzie Bennett diaries uh started up again today and somebody spoiled a little bit of what happens at the end and it ties into another story that I really really enjoy but I haven't read Emma so I haven't watched Emma Approved it's one of the Jane Austen's besides her short stories or whatnot that I haven't read the only one so I got that on Audible because it was 99 cents and I already had the like copy of the ebook so that may be what I start next and then I can watch Emma Approved and join in on the second season. Hi it is October 10th at 12 39 p.m. which means that I walked home for lunch. I was a little late leaving the office so I'm gonna have like a 12 40 to 1 40 lunch or something. I'm about to grab food and I thought that I could start reading but I'm having a really hard time picking what to read next. I did finish Bad Blood by John Carreyrou and I ended up giving it four out of five stars. I so the beginning of the book kind of tells the about the formation of Theranos and a lot of how people got involved and then the like revolving door of people coming in and out of the organization which is really interesting to read about like where people's breaking point were and like the things that they started to notice about Theranos but also about how long it went on and like it was just such an audacious scheme and so you don't we don't really hear from Elizabeth herself, Elizabeth Holmes, who's running the company. She refused all of the interview requests from Carrie Rue. So it's very interesting to get like every other piece of that story for the most part and have the like gap missing of where like just the audacity and just like the the lack of moral compass because of the fact that she was basically testing what should have been tested through trials and whatnot and she was just like sending it out to the public and the harm that it caused and the harm that it could have caused is just astounding to me so all of that was very very interesting I did get like 30% in and I was like where is this story gonna go and by halfway like it was still interesting to read about like the people coming in and out but it did get like that started to get a little bit repetitive because by that point you're like okay I get it this this is like a horrible scheme and it did kind of switch at that point because that's where uh, Carrie Rue got involved and it talks a little bit about how he got involved with the story and how he broke the story and that was very interesting especially because of like the legal pressure that he faced and the Wall Street Journal faced and his sources faced it was really really interesting how ham Theranos went <laughs> even though they knew like they knew their stuff was crap it's just really 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 interesting and I heard Deboki talk about this and she's got a great video about it a video review she came at it from the perspective of a scientist and like what bad science does and why things are peer reviewed and tested and like the entire process that you have to go through with innovation in a medical field and whatnot. And so that was, I read a lot of it with that in mind, but also from my perspective, it was just really interesting to read about like the company culture and like the way that HR kept being involved and mentioned very briefly, but I just kept like honing in on those instances and it was very very um 
thought-provoking to read it from the perspective of the employees at that company and what they went through and what like their like I said like what their limit was and where they started to break and how that was different from for every person involved and just kind of the the atmosphere that was created uh, out of the gate in that company was very very telling I enjoyed this a lot if you can't tell I gave it four out of five stars just because of that little bit of the repetitiveness at the beginning but it was I, I filed it away or I, I shelved it as one of my favorite reads of 2018 so I'm super excited I did like I said I've had success with my last two books in the non-fiction category and so because I'm having trouble picking what to read next like I don't know what I'm in the mood for I went through like the library and I got another nonfiction book and I could like list all the things that I have to potentially be read but I don't know I might try and, and pick something up and see how far I get during lunch or I might do more snark squad stuff it is 6 15 p.m. so I am home from work while I'm in the car but I did indeed start a book during lunch American Fire by Monica Hesse and it is another nonfiction book and I I read 21 pages of it so it wasn't a ton of pages but I think I'm gonna stick with it the the intro was a little information heavy like it was interesting information but and I understand why it was like setting up the information that it did with the introduction to the town but all said and done I think I'm gonna stick with this one I am in the car right now because I'm driving to my mother's house and the library that I frequent is like down by her house. So I have this going on in the front seat, not this. This is my book of the month book, um, which I am, I already started listening to on audiobook, but I wanted to purchase the hard copy and there was a book of the month version. So I purchased that, but all of these are library books that have to go back so I don't know what I'm gonna bring back I don't think I want to bring back too many books because I start to get overwhelmed I didn't read any of these and I just I got overwhelmed I've already been talking about how like hard it is for me to pick something next to read because I don't know what reading mode I am in uh, obviously now nonfiction, but I don't know what to get from the library so I'm only gonna try and bring back like maybe three things we'll see return these grab some new things maybe visit my mom for dinner and back home I said three but I have four and I don't want to spend too much time like thinking about this because it's getting dark I'm just gonna go <laughs> It is Friday, October 12th at 5.44 p.m. and I didn't really record an update yesterday because I didn't really read a ton. It was, it's been generally a busy week at work. In the time that I had after work yesterday, I finished writing a recap and I posted that and that was pretty much it. So I skipped an update yesterday and today I am now home from work, which is great. I'm so excited that it is Friday and that we had Shake Shack for lunch and it was otherwise a very fun and productive day. I've been mentioning like what to read, what to read, and I totally got our our podcast schedule confused. I thought we were doing the Buffy episodes this weekend, but it's actually my brilliant friend, so I have to reread that between now and Sunday. So that's a thing that I have to start and I'm going to put aside American Fire, which I've read 112 pages of, so I'm about 45% of the way finished with that book. So hopefully by the end of the weekend I'll I would have read uh, reread My Brilliant Friend and finished American Fire and that will bring my total to three books or I'm not I can't remember if I finished the Golden State Killer one um, in this week technically but I think three books that's very exciting I think that's more than I've done in a little while so I'm happy with that and doing these updates really keeps reading even though it's like I didn't read as much as I wanted to or whatnot but it, it reminds me that you know I'm doing this and like keeps reading at the forefront because as you guys can see I do a lot of media things it's easy to get lost in all of that and kind of put reading to the side so tonight I've got nothing going on I had friends coming over but we've actually rescheduled for later in the month so I've got a free Friday night and I'm gonna sit here and do media things I'm gonna start rereading re re my brilliant friend I'm gonna try and recap something probably I think Doctor Who is 
is next up on my list um, so I'll, I'll give that a go and yeah that's all I got uh, tomorrow I have we are recording the Dragon Prince episode of the Snark Squad pod tomorrow in the morning and then after that I have a baby shower and then I'm going out with some of my friends and my sister after the baby shower so tomorrow will be a really full activity day not a big media and reading day and um, so yeah I'm gonna try and get more of that knocked out tonight hi it is Saturday October 13th at 2.02 p.m. and I am driving to my mother's house because we are all meeting there to go to my cousin's baby shower. I recorded an episode of the podcast this morning so that is one to-do list item checked off of my list and tomorrow we have another one and I have to read my brilliant friend finish reading it from now to then. I started it last night and I got 11% of the way through. I don't know how many pages it calculates into because I'm reading it on audiobook, listening to it at the same time. So I'm 11% of the way through my brilliant friend and I read another 35 pages of American Fire. So that's exciting. I don't know if I'm going to have both done by tomorrow. Well, I have to have my brilliant friend. I would love to have my American Fire done also. I know I already said this, but Hi, it is Sunday the 14th now and I just wanted to record this little kind of ending thing um, for this week's vlog and then I'll start a new one for today. I think it came out all okay. I already have like ideas about how to record updates that might be a little bit more interesting and just talk to you a little more about what I'm reading. I'm not sure how much I did that in retrospect and I haven't edited this yet so um, I do have ideas about how to kind of keep this flowing and make it interesting and then also try and capture more from my day-to-day -day life even though it's not always so exciting. Um, uh, but yeah, it just the remembering part of like to like whip out your camera and just getting more confident in doing so because you know It's kind of it's kind of weird to me still at least so um, Yeah, but this was fun and I did a lot of reading this week for me I finished bad blood by John Kiriru and that was 341 pages and I ended up giving that four out of five stars or four and a half out of five stars so I really enjoyed it I thought it was great nonfiction it had a very good story at the heart of it and it just kept me hooked and since then I've been talking about it a lot like I brought it up at work especially with like the human resources angle of it and whatnot so it just has stayed with me I recommended it to my best friend Nicole and at, overall like as far as nonfiction goes if you're not a huge nonfiction person I think this is still a good entry point because it is like it has a very good narrative bend and it talks about not only the events but how this person the reporter John Kiriru kind of broke the story so that was really interesting as well last night I also finished American Fire so that ended up being 255 pages and this one was interesting but not this is the third uh, nonfiction book that I read in a row and this one was probably my least favorite of the three it was it was fine um, I found myself not as invested in the story or the storytelling it was a little bit more removed from me and there was a lot that was I don't know I think here what was supposed to like kind of capture your attention was not only the story between the two people so it was a couple who were who burned down like 60 something houses in a small county in Virginia on the eastern shore and so kind of their story of why this started happening but also kind of this idea of like rural America and how it it's dying or changing and how all of these buildings that they were setting fire to were empty and abandoned in this county because of poverty and the way that people have moved out of rural rural settings and uh, to go into cities and so it's something like that American nostalgia thing is not something that is gonna grip me <laughs> it's particularly like I get it and she even addresses that idea that you know we can be nostalgic almost to a detriment in certain ways and not recognizing the way that things are evolving and not like kind of looking back on the good old days you know 
it's just it's not something that rang true to me in my personal experience and is something just particularly like a sore spot I think for a lot of Americans right now and the way that you know more more people live in urban settings and how that is not yet reflected in certain areas of life and politics so is what I'll say so it was a fine story I'll probably end up giving it like three stars but it just wasn't my favorite in addition to that I've been reading my brilliant friend which I technically have to finish by tonight it's a reread so I'm not like super worried about it but we're talking about it tonight on the podcast Sunday night's podcast recording I did record yesterday for the dragon prince and that's the episode that will be up in this week it's all it's all a lot but I read 93 pages of my brilliant friend and in addition to that I read 87 pages of an absolutely remarkable thing and 15 pages of Emma by Jane Austen so a couple things that are in the works and not quite finished yet but in total I read 791 pages which is pretty exciting I finished two books did i is that what i said yes i finished two books um hopefully three by tonight thank you so much for following me around this week and for being here for my first experience of a weekly slash reading vlog hopefully this is a manageable time and it was somewhat entertaining thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys soon